This is the beginning of a new day. This is the beginning of a new day. God has given me this day to use as I will. I can waste it. I can waste it. I can waste it or use it for good. What I do today is important. What I do today is important. As I am exchanging the day of my life for it. When tomorrow comes. When tomorrow comes, this day will be gone. Forever. This day will be gone forever. 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 Leaving something in its place. I have traded for it. I want it to be gain, not loss. Good. Good. Good, not evil. Success. Success, not failure. In order that I shall not forget. In order that I shall so not I forget, shall forget the, the price, price I've paid for it. and head of security. Now, Steve in D.C. You guys have got to hear something. I, I, I couldn't wait as soon as I heard it this morning to find it and play it for you guys. Uh, AI, you know, you can do anything with AI. Oh. It's scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So somebody has taken Beyonce's song, Texas Hold'em. Oh, boy. And here's what it would sound like if Hank Williams Sr. had recorded oh, it. Oh, no. It's actually very good. Really? Yes. Beyonce's Texas Hold'em, thanks to AI, recorded by Hank Williams Sr. Check it out. Well, this ain't Texas. <laughs> ain't no Hold'em. It's amazing. Lay your cars down, 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 down. It's really good. It is. To park your Lexus. It's if they didn't have those Throw your then. cheese up and stick around. And I'll be damned if I can't slow dance with you. Come pour some sugar on me, honey, too. Oh it's a real wild. life boogie and a real life hoedown. Don't be a gum and take it to the floor. I'll be damned if I can't slow That's dance so with you. Come pour some sugar on me, honey, too. It's a real life boogie and a real life hoedown. Don't be a gum and take it to the floor now. Hank hey, Williams! See, we didn't talk like that back then. Uh, and it's funny he referenced the Lexus, which we didn't have back then either. No, no. Uh, but that uh, Hank, that's a, that would have been in the 1950s if he had done Texas Hold'em. Y'all, the <laughs> eerie thing is that they can take any person's oh, voice I know. I know. and make them say new stuff. Yeah. 
Like so, they just did right there. I mean, I, I, we can. This, this is bad. This no is limits. not good. No limits. I, I mean, know AI is horrifying, especially yeah. like I'm going into the film industry, yeah. and it's scary. It's yeah. it's taking Are over you? everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, adult a, or um, just regular DC <laughs> films. DC regular films, right? Yes, Probably, yeah, regular yeah. films. Okay. Create, sure. create a media major. Come on. Um, <laughs> but no, it's horrifying, and I'm waiting. I'm like, it's gonna take over. All of the jobs soon. We're well, not going to have waitresses anymore. That's going to be but AI let me just robots say, cooking. Let me just say, but like we just heard, and that was fun, and that was harmless. If it's used for good, I think <laughs> it's wonderful. And it never is, Only though. Only when it's used for evil. <laughs> yes, yes. It poses a problem. Because when they make it appear that someone is singing something horrible, and they, well, you now, know. They did it with Taylor Swift, and they did it with somebody else just the other day in Congress. I heard a congresswoman. They, they they can can manufacture uh, <laughs> nude pictures. Yeah. yeah. Make it look yeah. just like it's that person, which is just, yeah. that's crazy. Because, I mean, you know, Taylor I mean, Swift had a fit when they did it with her. Oh, my God. And, and who wouldn't? What if I could use AI to make it appear that you confessed to a murder? Well, you could. You could. And use your voice. You could. And and I'm the one that killed right. uh, OJ's uh, uh, wife. It could affect, yeah. our, it could affect I, our legal system in a, in a big right, way. Right. I mean, we won't believe anything anymore. I think AI is great for some reasons, but it yeah. needs to. there needs to be like laws yeah. around it. There yeah. needs to be a code of ethics. Like I said, when it's used for good and not evil, right? yeah, it can it be can quite be, entertaining. Yes, it can be. Yeah, like the Hank we just heard, right? That was awesome. <laughs> that they, was fun. I've heard it. They do it with like cartoon characters, uh -huh. too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. Anything. I guess there are no yeah, limits. Literally anything. There are no limits to do it. Do you realize we with AI... We could probably have your voice do well, it. Yeah, we well, yeah. I know we that. can. But do you realize with AI, somebody could take that and, and make it appear as if I were posing nude? <laughs> <laughs> So far, that hasn't happened. No. No. What's trending hot in Nashville? Did anybody get arrested last night? Let's uh, <laughs> let's go to Nashville now. Check in with Jimmy Carter to find out. Oh, Jimmy! Morning, Jimmy Carter. Roll Tide. Oh yeah, the police blotter. Well, first of all, there's a weird one currently at the jail in Wetumpka, Alabama, the Elmore County Jail, is Winona Judd's daughter, Grace. Really. As she flashed her breast and showed her lower body at I-65 and Elmore County Road 14. Well, that eclipse got <laughs> everybody in a tizzy. That eclipse just made people crazy. <laughs> uh, she's got a $1,000 bond, but no one's paid it. <laughs> oh, oh, she was still oh. there on Monday. So Winona has not gotten her, out of, her daughter out of jail. Oh. Or her dad or anybody else. Oh. Interesting. So, so don't she, know what she flashed her. I don't know why she was there. don't know why she, why she flashed people. Don't know anything. Did you say? She's did you problems. say Wetumpka? It happened in Wetumpka. Well, I'll tell you where it happened. Okay. If you go to I sixty five, is the the exit north of the Bass Pro Shop. Okay. Okay. Near Prattville. Right. All right. Lots but, of things. But the jail is in Wetumpka. I got gotcha. At the Bass Pro Elmore Shop. Elmore County. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, there you go. Uh, the ratings for CMT were were good. They were number one for the night. Beat the Voice and Idol, but it's five million people. Man, that's low. Yeah, it is. Those shows used to get 10, 15, 20, 30 million people, you know. Yeah. Nope, yeah. not anymore. The ACMs came out yesterday, final nominations. Luke got eight. Morgan got six. Megan Maroney is taking that slot. Uh, she's getting six. Cody Johnson, Chris Stapleton, Lady Wilson got each. They got uh, five. <laughs> now, who got snubbed? Zach Bryan got snubbed. This is a very political thing. All these award shows are. He is represented by Warner Brothers Los Angeles, not Nashville. And that can make a difference in oh, how I things see. go for him. Uh -huh. And then Carly Pierce, no one got zero this year. She just went from hero to zero. Yeah, for some she reason. did. Fast. Yeah. Yeah. And then Oliver Anthony, people are wondering why he didn't get nominated. He had a number one song, but I think he had no follow-up. And he was a one-trick poet. Well, right. but, you know, he's been selling his soul, working all day. I knew that was coming. That's right. It's a damn shame. Yeah. <laughs> it is a damn shame. Uh, good road trip for Stephen D.C. would be the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. Yes, it would. They've right. got their lineup now, April 25, 28, May 2 through 5. Rolling Stones, Chris Stapleton, Earth, Wind & Fire, The Heart, Foo Fighters, Neil Young, Bonnie Raitt, George Thorogood, a salute to the Jimmy Buffett Coral Reef wow. Band, and on and on and on. I would see that in a minute. 
that's a strange festival. You know, it's it's a dozen stages, uh-huh. so they're all over the place. Yeah. And they got the main stage, so where the Stones and people like that would play. The biggest problem with it is rain. New Orleans loves to rain. Yeah, you're and right. Somewhere in there, it go rain. Yeah. And the severe weather, South Alabama today. That's a, definitely a heads up. They're getting a little nervous around there from. Biloxi to Laurel, Mississippi to Atmore, places like that. I think they're a four. Yeah, that's right. We're a, we're a bunch of rain and wind today, but the severe we, stuff is we, to the south of us. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Little big town and uh, Sugar Land definitely touring together. Biloxi, Nashville will be the closest you're going to get to that. Turns out people are doing a little investigating. There was a Vanderbilt student that was hit by a chair that was thrown off of Jason Aldean's roof two years ago by a guy he got arrested got charged with something similar and he got two years probation and served his two years probation and now is trying to get the charges expunged from his record are we sure morgan wallen was nowhere in that neighborhood two years ago (laughs) i guess did you see the roddy dunn uh meme yesterday no huh Oh, Lord, Ronnie Dunn did one. You did look it up on uh, it's on TikTok, I think, is where it is. I put it on Facebook. but Was he throwing chairs? He, yeah, he's, no, he's reading something about something, and all of a sudden, <laughs> behind him, a chair comes oh. down and hits the hits the deck outside where he's talking. I, I saw where even uh, the nightclub that Eric Church owns, Chiefs, I guess it's called, in Nashville, where it happened, uh, is having a little fun with it, too. <laughs> well, it's just... Morgan, by the way, they have given him credit. He doesn't get a lot of credit, but he's two for two in the all-time great country music mug shot. Uh-huh. Uh, if you go to Smoking Gun, Wadona and Glenn Campbell probably are still two of the worst. Yeah. Johnny Cash's is pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, but Morgan, he still looks like a some kind of high school history teacher. Well, yeah, he did. He looked a lot better in, in the one that just came out. Now, have you seen these memes, these commentaries? That, why do they pick on Morgan Wallen so much anyway? I, I'm trying to figure that out. I think out. it's because he's so successful. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Well, they said he makes this one has a whole list of he makes music for 24-year-old guys who date high schoolers. Oh, okay. Well, I've never heard that before. He <laughs> makes music for dudes who cheat at bass fishing tournaments. <laughs> that's not, that's not, that's he not makes good. Fish, he makes music... For people who back into sonic stalls. Uh-huh. <laughs> he makes music for people who hunt on high fenced in properties. Okay. And oh. he makes for people who think stealing copper is owning a small business. I'm telling you, this eclipse has had an impact on all of us. It really has. Yeah. Well, you say it, I knew it. I'm going to go out and look for the eclipse again today. I go out there every day. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. Jimmy Carter, everybody, that's what's trending hot this morning from Nashville. <laughs> we appreciate it as always. Uh, what are people doing with all the, uh, it occurred to me yesterday, with all of the leftover eclipse glasses that we all went out and bought? In fact, I left a pair over there. Yeah, uh, the, I saw those. You I see didn't those? Know those were yours? I, I didn't know what to do with them. Like, should I throw them away? Well, uh, that's the thing. Or do you? You save them as a souvenir that, yeah, I was around in 2024. Use well, them next time. But, yeah. yeah, I'll use them next the, time. The, all this, bu- we talked about it yesterday, Kat and I, that all this business of, oh, it's going to be a lifetime before the next one. Oh, please, in the next eight years. They so. just said that in, in 2019 that uh, yeah. it's going to be forever. And and now we are, you know, here yeah. again. So. Two decades before the next uh, total eclipse. I'm not buying that. I'm not yeah. buying it because they said yeah. that last time and we well, had one was. five years it later. Was two decades for total eclipse. Well, totally I can't eclipse. see. I can't keep up with the total and the ninety yeah. percent. And yeah. like, what's yeah. the difference? Well, you there's know, a, there's a difference. Uh, and one other item I wanted to mention this morning that I think is trending hot is the women for the first time ever beat the men in the NCAA basketball ratings for the final game. <gasps> yeah, how about That's that? That's awesome. Yeah, well, girl we're, power. We've been talking about that. The women have been really doing that for the last like yeah. several months for now. The finals, though, that, that has never happened before. About. 15 million people tuned into TBS to watch the UConn uh, game, uh, watch him smoke Purdue. But then about 19, 4 million more people watched the women's final game. So that's a, that's a big number. Awesome. Yeah. And and, and they, they beat them in the Elite Eight. They yeah. Really, the last several, you know, big yeah. playoff runs, it's been the women that have outrated the yeah. men. And then for the championship game, the big one, the biggest of the biggest, the women win. So what does that mean? Well, that I, means there was drama. 
That yeah. means there was uh, there were personalities involved. There was there was a lot of drama on the women's teams, especially oh, really? especially with LSU. They and, uh, I, I, I guess that gets the ratings right. The, LSU the, is up to no good. They caused yeah. a lot of lot of drama. Little corn dog smelling. It's just fun. Awesome about people's lives. What's your bag of now? The Steve and DC Morning Show. Time now for the Morning Pledge and National Anthem. And this morning, we dedicate the pledge to everybody headed to Crestmont Elementary School. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Stephen DC show. We need a, an actual record player George in Davis. the Bear Studio. Well, yeah, there's something about a radio station without a turntable that I, I just don't know. I don't, uh, think yeah. I don't think that's right. Every once in a while, I want to whip out some vinyl. Yeah, me too. Well, vinyl is popular again. It's hot. Very yeah. hot. In fact, last year, I, they tell me vinyl outsold CDs last year. It did. Uh, it did outsell CDs. And uh, you know who else is hot? Who? Shane Spiller. Well, has there ever been any question about that? Shane Spiller in a rare Wednesday morning appearance on the Woo! show. Usually it's Friday, but uh, it's, it's going to feel like Friday now all day, and that's all right with me. Shane Spiller, good morning, brother. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, listen, you, I, I, I stopped dead in my tracks because I, I remember it, but I didn't remember that it was four years ago. I saw your post about it being the four-year anniversary of you discovering a 99% blockage in your heart, Shane Spiller. Yes, sir, it is. Wow. That's, that's first of all, 99% is that's a, pretty that's scary a sounding. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, right a, that's a widow maker right there is what that is. And uh, I, I remember hearing you briefly talk about this before, and, and I guess uh, your doctor was saying something along the lines of, I mean, even the least little thing of, of straining could have really caused you an issue, and you didn't even know it. No, I didn't. I, it only had symptoms when I got my heart rate up above a certain heart rate, and uh, so and it was it was very scary because like sitting here talking to you guys didn't feel a thing. Wow, wow. Yeah. But when you would exert yourself, I, you, you, I had a hard time catching my breath. Um, I had a, it felt like somebody sitting on my chest. Those classic symptoms, yeah. right? Yeah. But you know, you said in your post, and I thought it was a great point for all of us. Uh, you said, just remember, uh, listen to your body. 
That's exactly right. Yeah. But, you know, we, we just, we're hard-headed. We, we're busy. You know, we, we, yeah. we tend to put off things that... We, we explain it away. Yeah, yeah we, we, we can we can uh, give all kinds of excuses. Yeah. How'd they find it, the blockage? Uh, the only way to really find out if you have a blockage is to do a heart cath, which means they, they go inside your veins all the way to your heart. They shoot dye around your heart and those veins, and it, it can show where the blood is flowing and not flowing. Really? When they yeah. walked back into your room and said, you have 99% blockage, see, at that point, I would have had a heart attack. <laughs> How did you react? I know you're a man well, of faith, and that, that makes time, a big difference. At that time, I was difference. pretty doped up. I, oh, well, they good. Gave me, uh, I wanted to actually watch the procedure, uh, so they gave me half a bottle of Jim Beam instead of the whole bottle. <laughs> and, uh, and and so, seriously, they, they I was able to watch the, the um, oh, procedure. Oh, you did? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, as soon as as soon as he got in there to the to the heart, he said he shot that die in there, and it was on a it's on a screen. Yeah, you know, uh, X ray. Um, he said, "There it is. It's blockage right there in the in the LAD, which is the um, lower yeah. artery something, uh-huh. which is the Widowmaker. It is the Widowmaker. Yeah, it's right? like a, it's like an interstate. You know, it's a pretty uh-huh. major road that really? leads to a bunch of little roads. So and, and so did it just uh, unblock it instantly? Oh uh, yeah, uh, they they put a, a stent in there, which is a yes. kind of like a little spring that you have in your pen, you know, uh-huh. Uh-huh. one of those little things that opens your um, your artery yeah. up, your your vein up. So and, it's still doing its job to this day, right? Yes, sir. And and praise you, the Lord. Did you instantly feel relief, like in terms well, of like I, like I told you earlier, I, I really didn't have any symptoms unless. But so now when I do get my heart rate up on the treadmill or what have you, what I, what, what do you mean by? Tr- Treadmill. It's one of those things you exercise. <laughs> uh, what do you mean by exercise? This uh, conversation makes me. I want to lie down right now. Yeah. I need to well, lie down. Let me tell you something. The thing that worries me is uh, I don't remember the last time I exerted myself. So how would I know if I had that kind of block? <laughs> well, I exert myself, and I feel like Shane Spiller just said a second ago. Yeah. I've, you know, uh, coming up the stairs every day, I feel that. that counts. <laughs> I guess for me it does. So I guess the moral of the story is listen to your body and get a checkup, right? Yeah, don't don't keep putting it off. Yeah, no. well, thank God, and and you know, for you, it was such a young age too, and yeah. a young man to have that happen. That was forty-seven man. back then. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah. Uh, were you really? Yeah, forty-seven. Golly, I don't know what kind of vitamins you take or what kind of moisturizing cream you use, but you look. Miss Emily puts that cold cream on me at night. Ten, and, and, <laughs> did they ever tell ten you? years younger than you are. Because 47 is young. What caused the blockage? Did they ever tell you that? Uh, yeah, bad cholesterol. Um, really? So and that's another thing. My cholesterol levels, you know, you have a good cholesterol and a bad cholesterol. My good cholesterol was very, very high, which is a good number. Uh, and my low cholesterol, my LDL, was was. Uh, elevated, but they said the reason uh, my regular doctor said you shouldn't ever have a heart issue because your good cholesterol is so high. Okay, well, uh, uh-huh. but my my cardiologist said, well, that doesn't always equate. Wow, uh, yeah, wow. But, so I, I've got bad genes. Uh, my, oh, okay. I'm gonna blame this on my daddy. <laughs> a lot of this is genetic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, now has Mike, your dad, who everybody knows and loves, has he had heart issues? He uh, he has not. Now his his father, my grandfather, passed away pretty he early. Did. I sixty see. something, sixty four, I think he was year, years old when he passed away. Uh-huh. But uh, my dad has always taken cholesterol medicine at least uh, since his thirties. It makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you're practically a cardiologist now. Uh, yeah. you know what? I, I've learned a lot. I bet. But, well, you're teaching us too. Yeah. How <laughs> often do you have to go back and get all that checked? Uh, once a year. Once a year. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, thank God, uh, it's in your rearview mirror now. Out. Amen, and, and uh, we are we are so grateful, and that's a good public service announcement yes, for everybody. Uh, on that note, uh, we'll get your heart rate up in a minute because you'll get all excited. You're going to win concert tickets. Shane Spiller helps us give those away, and you choose the concert you want to see. So uh, we're standing by for that two zero five three three nine four ninety five three. That'll be coming up in just a minute. First, let's talk about Spiller. Let's talk about the idea that Spiller can furnish your home. Yes, sir. For an incredible price. We have the we have the house full of furniture deal, which is a great thing for all of our uh, students. Anybody moving to a new home, just anybody needing to furnish an extra bedroom. Cat? You hear that cat? They can yes. furnish your it's full cat, house. Is cat moving? Well, you never know. She may now once she's heard about this special. Well, I think it's worth the move just to get to the furniture deal. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you could look. You could finance it at Spiller Furniture and Mattress, only one hundred fifty four dollars a month. Uh, but you get to choose your living room suit. You get the tables with that. You get a dining room suit and a bedroom suit, all for under twenty five hundred dollars. That's an incredible price and an incredible opportunity, also, uh, especially if you have yet to have accumulated a lot of furniture or you just don't like what you have. Well, I th- we think these deals are sweet. So uh, right now we're having this Spiller's Sweet Deals. Uh, matter of fact, Cat 
they're so sweet they started calling me Sugar Shane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, isn't that funny? Yeah, that could, that could stick. In fact, yeah, I think it has. Stick. Sugar um, Shane. But, yeah, Spill of Furniture Masters, 13 locations. We've got them in uh, West Alabama. We have two over Mississippi, Startville and, and Columbus, Mississippi. We'd love to help you out over there. But uh, y'all come see us at Spill of Furniture Masters. Big selection, friendly service, and credit, credit, credit. And the quickest delivery in town. We'd love to enrich your home. Uh, they'll do it. Now, uh you mentioned Miss Emily sharing uh, that moisturizer cream with you every night. Yes. It's the reason you look so young, Shane Spiller. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just uh, curious if uh, Miss Emily will help in your being able to answer this morning's question. The mm. question that we're going to pose to give away these concert tickets. Her influence on you may have prepared you to win this thing for somebody. Okay. So she gets all the credit if, if uh, we're successful here. All right, we'll see. All right, let's see who this is on the phone. Hello, who is this? Hello, what's your name? And let's okay. see who this is. Hey, who's this? What's your name? Oh, I know. <laughs> Hello. You see, do I have everything adjusted properly over here? You know, I was out yesterday, and I have to be oh, retrained okay. every day when I come back. Yeah, it looks like it's good to me. Sure. 95.3 The Bear. Hi, who's this? It's Julie. Julie! Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. Hey, Julie, how are you? I'm good. How are y'all? We're great. great. Say hi to Sugar Shane Spiller. <laughs> hey, Sugar Shane. What's up, Julie? What are you doing today? I'm headed to work. All right. Where are you working? I work at a doctor's office in Woodstock. Okay. Oh, very well, good. Could y'all check and see if I have any blockage? <laughs> uh, I'm worried about it. <laughs> DC, if, if you and I don't have blockage, it's a miracle from... Stop. <laughs> don't even say that. Is that, uh, is that Cahaba Medical in Woodstock? It is. Okay. That's I, a good I feel, one. kind of feel like James Spann. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know where the Booby Bungalow is, but I know where Cahaba Medical is in Woodstock, Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Booby Bungalow. He, you know, he he had he was doing a tornado cover. I was watching. Said, yeah. He said, this tornado is coming right through Jasper, right next to the boogie. Uh, boogie what do you call it? Bo- booby bo- Boogie Bungalow? Yeah. Yeah. But I asked him about it later, and he told me he got more response to that than anything he's ever said on television. Oh, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> well, I love it. Good radio. <laughs> it is. Uh, and Okay, here we go. It is 60 seconds to answer this question. A minute to win it. And now, Shane Spiller, you can answer and be wrong as often as you like, but you got to be right at least one time within 60 seconds. All right, let's win All this. All right, here we go. Come on. Come on, Julie. Cat, you can help out if you'd like. All right. The game begins in three, two, one. 1,000 women were asked... What is the ro- most romantic thing they can think of? I get nervous reading it. Over a thousand women were asked, "What's the most romantic thing they can think of?" A thousand women. I bet. It, I bet they like flowers. Uh, they, you know, like a date night. A handwritten note. Oh, that's good. Uh, how about uh, jewelry from Fuji Pool? Sorry. Hey, cat. How about a new mattress from Silver Furniture? <laughs> <laughs> new mattress. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, a living room suit. I, I don't know what. Uh, let's see here. Have we hit it yet, Steve? Oh, it's got to be. It's, you might not have. You might not have. But I might have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's got to be flowers. I think it's flowers. Or some bare aspirin for blockage. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see here. How about uh, washing the dishes? Washing clothes. Oh, yeah, doing something like yeah. that for her. Yeah. Think about bed. something you do in the evening before you go to bed. Uh, brush your teeth. You said brush your teeth? Yeah. Uh, okay, I don't know if either of you said this or not. Oh, my goodness. Did anybody say a candlelight dinner? Well, I said date night. Does that count? Yes. Okay. Date <laughs> night. It does now. I mean, what else are you going to do on date night? You're going to have a candlelight dinner? <laughs> yeah, of course. I we mean, never have losers with Shane Spiller. <laughs> he does it, well, it he's a sponsor. Happen. Right. Julie, that's right, that's right. Congratulations, <laughs> Julie. You've won a candlelight right. dinner. Yeah. Thank women, y'all. Women said the most romantic <laughs> thing they could think of was a candlelight dinner. Number two was a picnic. Oh, goodness. So those two things. Ooh. That's terrible. Okay. Uh, you need to take Buzz. this Emily on a picnic. Stuff, yeah, I'm not into the picnic. Uh, all right, yeah. Julie, you get to pick the concert you want to see here. Who do you want to see? Travis Tritt, Rick Springfield with 38 Special, Cody Jinks, Billy Currington with Kip Moore are cool in the gang at Funkaloosa. Travis Tritt. Travis all Tritt right. it is. That's a good choice. We got you. Julie, you hang on. We'll get you all hooked up with those tickets. All we ask is that one day you buy something from Spiller Furniture and Mattress, all right? I, I sure will. 
Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie. We appreciate you. There you go. Have a good I got one. rice cooking in the microwave. That's yes. him. And he'll I got that, that three day one. beard. I don't care to shave. He yeah. may start with that. He might. It's such a big hit. Uh, by the way, Kip Moore, who will be appearing with Billy Currington at the Mercedes Benz yeah. Amphitheater. Kip Moore will join us live on the show today, and that'll be coming up about 8.30. How Man, about this? That's awesome. Yeah. So you can yeah. uh, hear a conversation with Kip Moore, who k keeps winning the uh, Sexiest Man he, in Country Music Award. Every time they have that uh, yep. annual thing, like yep. People Magazine does it still. The, uh -huh. They do the regular list, and they'll do like a Sexiest Country Star. And sexiest, he wins it over and over and he, over. He keeps winning. It's we got to uh, ask him about that. Yeah, we yeah, we to. will. We will. Shane Spiller, thank you so much, man. We've enjoyed this rare Wednesday appearance, and uh, happy A Day weekend to you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Glad to be on the award winning show here with well, 95. Thank you very, very much. You saying that. God bless you, Shane Spiller, everybody. Yes. We're glad you're still with us. Yes. I got a block of oh, there it is. <laughs> Phone shaming in just a minute, and we have a classic that I don't think you've heard in years uh, that I think you'll enjoy coming up features The Healer. Yes. We'll explain in a minute. Uh, also, chances for you to win a trip to Panama City Beach, Florida, plus Morgan Wallen concert tickets. Yeah, yeah. Assuming he's not in jail. That'll be coming up. No, so. no, and I don't think he will be in jail because he's, unless he does something else between now and then. Yeah, I don't think he will. So uh, so that is all on the way on 95.3 The Bear. We were just talking to Shane Spiller about it being the four-year anniversary of his 99% heart blockage and, and surviving that. And, and <laughs> now we've got Poogee Pool from Hudson Pool on the phone, and he too uh, survived a heart situation. Oh, my I, goodness. I'm going to get a stress test at 10 o'clock this morning, Poogee. Uh, I can't handle this. <laughs> Y'all better knock it out, man. I'm going to tell you, Shane and I both will tell you that, that God is good, and you got to listen to your body and, 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 and keep up with doctors and do those kinds of things. Uh, w what a blessing for both of us to still be walking this earth and uh, enjoying life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's right. No and you, you didn't have, you said you didn't have any crazy symptoms either, right? See, for a couple of years, you're not going to believe this one. I had what would be, the only way I can describe it, a brain freeze in my throat. You know, when you eat ice cream or drinking uh -huh. a daiquiri or something and yeah. you get that brain freeze in your throat? Right. Well, that's kind of what I would get. I could be walking and, uh, and get a little cool air in my face and all of a sudden I'd have to stop. And, and, I, and then after a minute or two, I could go again. So, we went to throat doctors and heart doctors and lung doctors and all kind of stuff trying to figure out what it was. Nobody knew. They thought it might be some type of asthma, but basically it was uh, three blocked arteries. And, oh, uh, and so you just don't know. You know what I mean? Um, like I say, I didn't really have much symptoms other than that and, and had no clue that it was a heart problem. Three blocked arteries. Wow. Yeah. And thank Actually, God. Four, yeah. Listen to this. I had four and one of them corrected itself. Really? Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. How cool is that? I, yeah. I had no, I didn't even know you could do that. But, uh, no. So they ended up fixing three. And and how blocked were they? Pretty severe. I couldn't do a stent. So uh, Dr. Lewis, my uh, cardiologist, thought she could do a stent and fix me up. And so they went in to, to do that, and they brought Jamie back to the to the operating room where I was. Says, "Look at this, and he's got to have uh, open heart." So, oh my goodness! That's that's the end of that story. <laughs> wow. wow! Well, it obviously uh, was very successful, and uh, again, praise the Lord that uh, you're going stronger than ever. Uh, that that makes us all want to go get checked today. Well, yeah, I think. Look, we're saving our our lives and others today. Yeah, I think this yeah, has turned this. into a public service announcement. It really has. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. so let me tell you my theory. My theory on this is is y'all talking about going get tested? All that kind of stuff. You know, they, they do a colonoscopy at a certain age where they go in and take a look at, at that part. And uh, I'm saying at about 50, they need to do uh, um, uh, where they go in and check check your heart through the to, through the vein on the inside. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. The name doesn't come to me. But anyway, and just check you out because if they had done that so when I was 50, they could have probably said, well, you got a problem here. We could, you know. Yeah. But until they go in there and look, they don't know. So, um, right. anyway. Well, I am making a note right now, Poogee Poo, that when I turn 50... <laughs> well, I just turned 50, so I'm going today <laughs> to get it, it handled. Out. <laughs> Man. Well, look, uh, now that we've all made our cardiology appointments, uh, let's talk about Hudson Pool Fine Jewelers and what is hot and what is special. I know collegiate jewelry, jewelry's got to be hot with A-Day coming up Saturday. It dang sure is. Graduation also. That's a big yeah. day for collegiate jewelry. Get those. And, and we got a couple of new pieces in the works for the fall. 
excited about that. And uh, I got to tell you real quick, we're, we're down at the coast for a couple of days and went to one of our favorite places last night. And the, and the girl that was doing the music said, well, there's Sparkle Daddy. Oh. Thought, <laughs> <laughs> Far and wide. <laughs> Far and wide. I love that. That is I awesome. <laughs> it was a shock. <laughs> yeah, but collegiate jewelry is wide and, and great. Uh, you know, like for graduation, a lot of people don't like class rings and everything as much as as we did back in the day. So uh, a real pretty uh, Alabama Spirit A necklace, uh, Spirit A ring, uh, you know, shows you're an Alabama alum and and uh, just just a fan, Alabama fan. So yeah, it's it's we got it going on. Yeah, I certainly do. Hometown jewelry store uh, since April April Fool's Day, many many years ago. Hudson Pool Fine Jewelers, where they gift wrap for you too. Eleven Eleven Greensboro Avenue, Monday through Friday, nine to five. Saturdays, ten to four. And online at HudsonPool.com. There Thank you, you Sparkle Daddy. Thanks, Poochie Pool. Yeah, everybody get your heart checked. Uh, yeah. That's the message this morning on the uh, Stephen D.C. It, radio it's show. It's not even officially National Heart Month yeah. or anything, but yeah. Uh, yeah, we're uh, we're getting everybody, I think, excited I think about so it. too. I know we are. All right, coming up, that phone sham call that we mentioned with the healer. Hang on. This is the Stephen D.C. Show. Fresh bunny phone sham calls and unforgettable classics. The phone sham always has me in stitches. I look forward to it every morning. <laughs> All right, we're going to have some fun on the phones, folks. We have uh, uh, something that's happened to our telephone lines just in the last few minutes. I zapped your line. It was him. <laughs> and the healer is here to do keep him on the phone. Yes, uh, it is the voice of Michael Stellatano, the Las Vegas healer. He claims he can heal you over the telephone, and we are gullible enough to... No, we don't believe him. No, we don't believe him. We it, have but, fun yeah. with him, and uh, we've made some phone calls. We're making some phone calls with clips from Michael Stellatano, the healer, that we have from past sessions with him. Can we keep an unsuspecting American on the the phone with these recorded clips and for how long i should warn you that during this segment some people will tingle it'll, it'll happen <laughs> it's, it's, it's happened in the past we're going to call and see if we can keep them on the phone hey, let's go first to brad is on the phone good morning brad uh, we're going to phone somebody that's not expecting our phone call do you think they will stay on with us for 60 seconds yes or no uh, yes. Yes. All if right. they do, Bradley, you are a winner. Let's make that call. Here comes the healer. He'll join us live in a moment to lay hands on Grandma Ann. <laughs> and Grandma Ann does not care for that at all. I do lay the hands on. Tell him, Mary, may I help you? We made contact. <laughs> it's morning here in Las Vegas. <laughs> Excuse me? <sighs> <sighs> Heavy, heavy now, what are you experiencing? You're talking to the wrong person. Is that right? Oh, my God, almighty. Who, who you were trying to ta reach? I want you to move me. You had the wrong number. Stop that right there. No, 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 no. <laughs> You know what? It, there's nothing pornographic about what he does, but it always sounds it like does. it. It does. Well, he said, plus the way the way he says it. It sounded like an obscene call, but it wasn't. But when the healer gets worked up, he sounds as if he's... I do lay the hands on. He lays the hands on. Well, I'm very, very sorry. Brad predicted it'd be more than a minute. It was not. So oh, Brad cannot sorry, take Brad. the prize. I want to hear the, the healer say his famous line. My hands are pulsating like crazy. Dan. First shot at keep him on the phone with the healer. Hey, good morning, Dan. How you doing? Good, good, good. We're going to call somebody at random. Do you think they'll stay on the phone with the healer for 60 seconds? Yes. Yes. All right. If they do, Dan. All right. My God almighty, we'll give you a... <laughs> Guide me again to the area. <laughs> Don't do it yet, okay? Are we sure he's healing? Texas. Now what are you experiencing? Pardon? We've made contact. What? My God. <laughs> now what are you experiencing? Hello? Hey, baby. My God. Oh, no. Hello? Stop that right there. No, 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 no. I ain't stopping nothing, baby. Baby. <laughs> cool. <laughs> what are you doing? Cool. <laughs> My hands are pulsating like crazy. Your hands are pulsating like crazy? Cool. <laughs> oh, really? 
It's horny here in Las Vegas. Horny in Las Vegas? Make contact. Are you there? Do you know what you called? I want you to move me. Uh, you want me to move you? Where do you want me to move you? <laughs> that sounds nasty. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. What are you doing, baby? Play along, though. How long, now? How long was oh, that? Did she hang up? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Where was I? <laughs> I was kind of wrapped up in the moment. <laughs> you know, Steve, I think you slid into an altered state there for a moment. I could have slid into my altered state. You know what? It was a minute, 13 seconds. That means Dan wins. Yeah. Dan, uh, all the all the prizes are yours. Well, this one. It's a t-shirt. Enjoy it, Dan. <laughs> but, but it is yours. All right? of it. All the left sleeve, the right sleeve, the neckline, the whole thing. <laughs> this is the Steve and DC Show. Get ready to win a trip to Panama City Beach, Florida, and and tickets to see Morgan Wallen in concert. Now, that's coming up a little after 8. Y'all, you know, yesterday we did not advance the ball down the field oh, at you all. Did. You didn't. And I was really hoping that we would advance the ball down the field. Right. Four I've, out of eight uh, correct guesses so far, the best we've had. I feel that uh, some people are intimidated by the roll titers, uh, so? the, the eight. Uh -huh. You know, and, and here's the thing. It's amazing to me. Take a wild stab because occasionally you get, you get it right. Yeah, sure. So don't, don't be intimidated by it or afraid of it. And it's worth a wild stab for a trip to the beach, a vacation, and Morgan Wallen tickets. Yeah, I mean, we're oh. talking Holiday Inn Resort, which is an amazing time, and then Morgan Wallen tickets. So, so that is all coming up. Uh, quickly, a man who stayed at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas uh, says the staff used his toothbrush to clean the bathroom. Now, how does he know that? Uh, he is threatening a lawsuit. He says there was definite, obvious damage to his toothbrush, he says it was very obvious when he returned to his room. And so he went to the hotel staff and he said, somebody used my toothbrush. Uh, and I believe it was to clean the bathroom. And he also said it had a foul smell about it. The, the, the Mandalay Bay in Vegas offered the man a $50 credit. <laughs> Probably to buy a new toothbrush. A fifty dollar credit, credit. but That's you don't. Great. Maybe he lost a bunch of money in the casino, and he was just trying to get some back. Who knows? Well, yeah. I, I mean, I don't. That just seems weird to me because without some proof or yeah, video, you need something. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't just say, "Hey, I think you did this." Yes, yes. So he's I, probably lucky they offered him a fifty dollar credit, but he's threatening a lawsuit. So good and luck with that. I know many of you were following the story of the women that went out to Oklahoma to get pregnant during the eclipse. Wow. Did, did they? Were they successful? Nine women were successful in <laughs> getting pregnant. Yeah, right. Uh, at no this way. Hour. Yeah. They wanted oh, wow. to get pregnant during the eclipse. Uh -huh. Now, one hundred sixty eight went. But only nine got pregnant, so... Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there's some disappointed women out there. Yeah. Oh, 100... And you know. no men were involved, by the way. No men involved. Yeah. It was a magical eclipse pregnancy. Uh-huh. Uh, and if you believe that, I want to sell you some oceanfront property in Jasper. Well, you know, uh, they believe it. Yeah, so. well, we'll now I guess we'll have to wait nine months to find out. Yeah, we? yeah. Yeah, they thought they were going to magically get pregnant during the eclipse. They did. But Without, nine of them did. No, <laughs> nine of them say they did. Yeah. Oh. I, I don't think, uh, and, yeah. And, and they also say that uh, their kids will have Super powers. Super powers. Oh. Right. Are you trying to scare me about something there, brother? Well, it is a little bit scary. I think it, it is really, very scary. It really is. Uh, by the way, that was the voice of uh, Poogee Pool saying that. She's still on the phone. <laughs> this is the Stephen D.C. Show. It is time now for the Stephen D.C. Morning Show a prayer and inspirational song. We think it's a great way to start the day. And leading us in prayer this morning is Pastor Hank Atchison. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for giving us another day. Lord, I pray for the one that may be headed to work now or sitting at work feeling like they have no purpose. And Lord, I pray that they would know that they were made by you and have value and dignity and worth because of who you are and that you have a plan for their life. Lord, I thank you for Stephen D.C. and their staff. Uh, they're, they're gifted entertainers. Thank you that they brighten so many days um, on a regular basis. Lord, I pray that they would continue to use this gift for your glory. Most of all this morning, Lord, we praise you for Jesus and, and the love that you have shown us through him. In your grace, you have reached down and made a way 
for sinful people when we had no way back to you. So thank you for the great salvation that you've given through your son, Jesus Christ. And we pray all of this in his name. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Great prayer, and we appreciate amen. it so much. Amen. Uh, and all the kind words as well from Pastor Hank Atchison. And now the inspirational song of the day brought to you by the one and only, the legendary Taco Casa. And yesterday when D.C. interviewed Garrett, who's a Tuscaloosa native and now doing very well in the band Restless Road with their hit Roll Tide Roll and their Academy of Country Music Award nomination, it was interesting to me that when D.C. asked Garrett what he missed most about Tus most about Tuscaloosa, he said, Taco Casa. Yeah, wasn't that, that, uh, that's, that's so true, though. Yeah, All the way to Nashville miss. and yep. now touring the country. And what does he miss most? Taco Casa. Taco Casa, of course. Uh, all right, our inspirational song of the day. More than anything, you know, we uh, just like this to be uh, a blessing to someone that needs it. And hopefully this will. It's called The Blessing. 95.3 The Bear.
is the Steve and DC Show. Uh, well, Don, I know this will come as uh, big news for you and uh, everybody else. Uh, Birmingham strippers employed by Sammy's are demanding a raise. Mm. Not getting enough tips. Not getting enough tips. Well, it's about time those girls are treated like they deserve. I agree. I mean, they're, they're working their ta ta tails off well, out there. Yeah. Uh, here's the problem. They don't make minimum wage. And oh, then they a, have to rely on mm, tips. Yep. Mm. And uh, look, mm. the dancers are asking for a jury trial seeking $100,000 in damages. I mean, these girls are trying to put themselves through college. And law school. Okay, and law school. school. Uh, All of that. And, 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 and they got to work on tips? In 2023, a federal judge ruled in a similar case that dancers at the Furnace in Birmingham, some of you are more familiar with that than others, were in fact employees of the club. There was a settlement that was sealed, but the club had to settle with them on money that they had not been paid. So really? The girls at Sammy's are now wanting uh, something similar. Now, the companies have been claiming that they were contract employees, so That's they... Right. they uh, didn't fall under employee uh, type situation. Right. Oh, That's okay. exactly right. Okay. And a, a, another equally bizarre story over the weekend, the daughter of country music superstar Winona Judd, her name is Grace Kelly. That Grace Kelly? Grace Kelly, Winona's daughter, was arrested uh, right outside of uh, Prattville uh, near the, the uh, Bass Pro Shop for exposing her breast and bottom part. Bottom part. <laughs> I love the way that's worded. Her bottom part. Well, I'm, I might have uh, substituted. It <laughs> was well, not her first time either. And it was, what do you know about this that we don't know? I was yeah, reading, yeah. I was reading the story a little bit uh, ago. The police officer there who made the arrest had earlier made another arrest uh, against her for a similar situation a couple of years ago. Really? Well, she, she has had some continuing struggles in her life. What they call a habitual offender. <laughs> but yeah, she was right there. They said at I-65 and Highway 14. No. And, and she, she, she exposed those breasts and her lower body part. And that bottom part. And then she <laughs> failed to comply with the police officer. I'm no. Having a, I, I'm thinking that's when he said, put your clothes back on, and she didn't do it. So they took the daughter of Winona Judd to jail where she, nobody has gotten her out yet either, by the way. Mama didn't come running to get her out. That's she's, the funny part. They just left her in there. She's still in jail uh, currently in Wetumpka. <laughs> Not probably the best place to be. <laughs> it's a terrible jail to be I mean, in. I don't know anything about that jail. That's oh. one of the few that I haven't been in. But I, 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 I spent some time in the Wetumpka Correctional well, you can Facility. You speak from experience. Yeah, let me tell you. But, she, but she's when, had a history of, of drug issues. Oh, hell, she has. Really? I didn't know that. Oh. Well, bless her heart. Well. She'll uh, keep her britches on and get some help. And then there's <laughs> this one. reminds me of, there's another... Country music singer. Yeah. In fact. Well, all he did was throw a chair. Now, he didn't take his pants off. <laughs> now, you've got me stirred up, and I've got to find it. Um, in what way are you stirred up, sir? Yes, the, sir. The 911 call with Garth Brooks' sister. I'm going to find that. I don't think I've heard this. R what? Well, while you find it, can I have, I've got one other thing. I got it. Okay, you got it. Go to it. Uh, you you want to? Well, you don't keep Garth's sister waiting. Okay. This is classic. Police, what is your emergency? Hi, um, I live at 733 South 142nd, and my neighbor across the street, which happens to be Garth Brooks' sister, is butt naked in a front yard. Across the street from your address? Yes. Do you know what her name is? Her name is Betsy, and I don't think she... I'm not sure if she's drunk or what, but she's looking for a Mustang that doesn't even exist. And like a car? Yeah, and she's got a baseball hat on, and that oh, is a it. Horse. <laughs> Can I get your and name? <laughs> My name's Amy. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but this is the funniest thing ever. Okay. So <laughs> but she out there by herself? Wanna... Huh? Is she out there by herself? She's by herself, but I think her girlfriend's in the house. All right. Her partner. All right, I'll go ahead and send an officer over there, okay? <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
the one time, where are the TMZ cameras when we need them? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Garth Brooks' sister is running around butt naked, dancing naked in the front yard. <laughs> wow. She could, she could go to work for Sammy's Lounge and be a part of the lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, or team up with uh, Winona Judd's daughter. And I know there's a dark side to that story because she had severe mental illness. I understand. I get it. And I think it. I think she ended up dying, actually, later. Oh, dear God. It's uh, awful. But uh, but that was during a time when she was just uh, you know acting crazy. Yeah. So. Well, that's you, you you've heard of crying out for help. That's crying that's out crying for out help for help right and there. And one final story, and there's no excusing this guy. There's nothing in his background that's gonna make you say, ah, oh, bless his heart. A guy in North Carolina has made the news this morning after being arrested. I'm not making a bit of this up. He, he was caught having relations with an 82 year old woman's 2008 Toyota Avalon. Oh, a 2008? Well, what difference does it make what year it was? It's <laughs> a little young. Even David DeSantis heard this story and went, dang. <laughs> He's Mr. Toyota. That's a little young for, uh, for him, I think. So the 82-year-old woman said she had been noticing damage to her car for several years. Oh, boy. But she finally caught the person in the act. Oh, boy. Here she is, Miss <laughs> Carolyn, explaining to police something about what happened. They caught him on camera. They came um, Monday morning, and they took the films out. And they come back to the door and say, we got him this time. She said, we got good films, we got good pictures, but it was more than we really wanted to see. So, <laughs> I believe <laughs> if I was Miss Carolyn, 82-year-old Miss Carolyn, I'd trade in my uh, Toyota Avalon at this point. <laughs> yeah, stop it. I, I'd trade that in. Gives a whole new definition to the term, love your Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> Honored to have a fella that is on his way in a, just a, a, a short, short time to rock Mercedes-Benz Amphitheater with his buddy Billy Carrington. Please say welcome to Kip Moore. Yeah. Hey, I need I need that applause to be a little more emphatic. You know what I mean? Like this ain't this ain't an Atlanta Braves game. Right. I mean, it's a Chicago Cubs game. I need a little more enthusiasm. Right. A little more enthusiasm. You got it. Let me let me see if I can fix that for you. Uh, listen, we are so excited about uh, you coming in. Is this your first time playing in in Tuscaloosa? My my first time. Um, I, I thought about it. You know, the other day when when it got announced, I said, "Dang." I don't even know if I have any fans in Tuscaloosa. I've never played in Tuscaloosa <laughs> oh. in my entire career. You know, the closest I got was Birmingham. Yes, um, yes. And, you know, I went to Wallace State to play basketball, and we used to go to Tuscaloosa to hang out sometimes. But, you know, I've never uh, I never, I never played a show there. Well, uh, I, I know the crowd is going to love you and go crazy. <laughs> See? Hey! All right. Hey, right. hey, now we're... Now, now we're cooking with grease, man. Now we're cooking with grease. We're <laughs> that's ready. A little, that's a little better, isn't it? All right, good. Yeah. Um, so, Kip Moore, I must ask you uh, right up front, because the the first thing that you see when you uh, put your name in to the Google and such uh, are all these things about how hot and beautiful you are. Uh, what's it like? <laughs> <laughs> what's it like to be so beautiful? <laughs> You know, uh, I, I, it's just uh, it's it's a it's a tough task that I got to deal with every day. You know, just kind of fiending people off, you know what I mean? Yes. Like I got the Heisman pose down. You know what I mean? it's like I got that Heisman jab. That's you know? right. That's right. I have that Derrick Henry jab down because I'm so gorgeous. You know, I got to keep that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Um, that, and I got to find out about this. Uh, is it true that at some point you actually lived in a, a hut in Hawaii? Well, uh, it was more like a, uh, it was like a, I don't even know how to describe it, man. It was a five by 10 foot, uh, like concrete slab that had like a, it had like a little roof on it and just like a screen around it. Wow. So wow. the, the walls were like two and a half feet and the rest was a screen. So literally. And here's the crazy part is I picked, I didn't, I was 22 years old. I graduated college and I was just kind of, I'd been playing in the bar bands and, and, and music was honestly, I didn't know that was something I could, you know, I love to write, but I'd never heard about Nashville, moving to Nashville to be a songwriter, those kind of things. And so I was just kind of lost on what I wanted to do. And, um, I literally was just like, all right, I'm gonna go, uh, I've always wanted to learn to surf. So 
I, I took my the money that I'd made at my summer, summer job and, and bought me a, a plane ticket to Maui and had about had about nineteen hundred bucks left from the money I'd made that summer <laughs> and um, was Man. just like I'm going to figure it out and I slept on the airport bench the first night pretty much and then Man. a guy came through and that I started talking with that was like hey I know this guy that's got this little kind of porch hut thing and he'll rent it to you for fifty bucks a month and. Uh, <laughs> That's what it was, was 50 bucks a month. But, but I picked Hilo of all places, like, because I remember that in history class. I mean, yeah. I didn't know anything about Hawaiian Islands. I just knew they had surf. I picked Hilo, which was, which is, has more rainfall, uh, like per square inch than anywhere in the entire United States. Is that right? Wow. So it, there's spots that are super sunny, but Hilo itself is a very wet tropical. I mean, it rained every <laughs> single night. So you can imagine. With, with just a screen around, like I woke up soaking wet every day, every day, and I would hitchhike to the beach uh, every morning and surf. And then I, I got this girl's student ID card for the Hilo College, and I'd have one, I'd have one meal a day, and I'd swipe her card, and I would get all the pizza at the buffet, and I'd stuff it in my backpack, and that's what I would eat for breakfast the next morning. <laughs> Man, well, hey. Pizza's fine for breakfast, so that's not that's yeah. not too bad. Well, I, I mean, I've always dreamed of living in Hawaii, and I think most folks, you know, at some point dream of that. And and you did it, but uh, just under some interesting circumstances. Yeah, like I don't that. think I don't think I don't think most people have that alley cat blood like I do. You know what I mean? I still have that alley cat blood. I just got back from surfing for the last two and a half months. You know, I'll tour for like 10 straight months and I go surf every winter. But, you know, I just got back a couple of days ago, man, and I, I didn't wear a pair of shoes or shirt for two and a half months. Wow. I just had a dirt bike with a little surf rack, a surf rack on the back, on the back. And, you know, I man. just get on that dirt bike every day and just go ride dirt roads looking for waves. No, that's pretty cool right there. Um, so you really, you, you loved the surfing once you got into it, it seems like. Seems oh, man, it's, it's, it's kind of all I can think about. You know, I'm, I'm always itching to find the next place I want to go. Wow. Um, you also have a connection to Alabama that I didn't know about until uh, today. And uh, that is that you, you began playing guitar in Alabama, I understand. I did my freshman year of college. Um, I, I bought a, I got a little old Yamaha guitar, a little beater at a pawn shop, and uh, my my family was really musical, so it was always a little bit intimidating. Uh, but I always, I started writing full comp, you know, full lyrical songs. By the time I was fourteen, I was like obsessed with the lyrical aspect. And um, and wow. yeah, my, when I was eighteen, my freshman year, probably two weeks into being in school, I got the guitar, man, and I just became completely obsessed with it. By the time I was 20, from 20 to 22, I was playing in all the bars in the South, like every Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. Wow. Now, how do you, I mean, because everybody, it's the dream to finally, you know, make it to Nashville and, 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 and get discovered or what, how, what was the thing that uh, finally led to your break? Man, you know what? It was, uh, it was stacking, it was stacking bricks. That's what it was. It wasn't like some magical moment. It yeah. was like. I was a, I was, I'm still maniacal about my pursuit of being a great songwriter. I and mean, I do it every single day, every morning. Um, but it was wow. that pursuit of trying to be great at what I did. And, and it was, I played a million songwriter rounds and then I played shows and it was, I, I'd work two jobs and then I'd come home at 10 o'clock and I'd stay up till three o'clock laying on my floor, listening to Bob Dylan records and Jackson Brown and Bob Seger. And I would write out all the lyrics and I'd handwrite all the lyrics and really try to understand the way Bob Dylan, you know, was using metaphors and the yeah. way that he was playing off the words. And I was a true student of the whole thing. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I just was obsessed. And I saw it. There's not like a, it was, I put in the work, I put in the preparation and, you know, it was like one thing leads to another. So and so heard you at this songwriter's round, but then they invited another okay. guy. Well, that guy came out, and then that guy told this publisher, and yes. that publisher told this label. Yes, and yes. so it was just like it was being ready once the right people were in the room, mm -hmm. and that's what happened. For me. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you mentioned you know songwriting. You just you're doing it all the time. The ideas for songs like uh i mean can they come from anything in your life i mean how's that work uh yeah for sure and i mean i, I read a lot so i mean that that's probably the biggest catalyst is, okay you know you read something the way somebody wrote it 
and um you know yeah um, yeah and you know it's like the other day you know reading something where you know uh somebody i was reading this reading this book and it was like you know leaving some single tracks on the snow um you know and the 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 the, the, the line was something about you know you know the moon shining down and i'm you know i've got some some footprints single tracks out here on the snow kind of thing something like that so it's about seeing that and be like, that's a cool image. How do I make that a hook? Yes. How do I make that a, because I feel like that's my life and that line resonated with me because I'm like, all right, well, you know, yeah. I've always felt like I'm kind of this nomad on my own and I feel like I'm always on the outside fringe of what society is and I feel like I've kind of floated on my own kind of terms and, you know, so then yes. it's about making a hook around that song, and I can't tell you what that hook is because it is a dang good one, and I don't <laughs> want anybody here just trying to write it. Nobody trying to but, steal it. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, uh, you know, it's um, so I just tracked it for the new record. I, I wrote it three days ago, and then I tracked it yesterday. Wow. Um, so um, can't wait. It's everything. There was stuff that I see. It's conversations that I'm having, and somebody says something. I'm like, oh, well, that was that was interesting. Like, how do I how do I spin that? You know. So, like, do you um, have ideas like all over in your phone, or where do, where do you keep them? You know. Yeah, I mean, they're in my phone. That they're in like a, I've got like whew, I've probably got ten <laughs> different notebooks at my house that are just filled with lyrical ideas. Wow. Um, and you know, my brain is. Uh, it's uh, nuts, man. Yeah. It's nonstop. I hear it all day in my head. So um, well, it's, you know, probably it, the only time that it shuts off is when I'm surfing. It's, it's really, it's, well, you need that time and you got to shut it down some. So you need that. Um, it's fascinating, though, for those of us that songs can just so impact people for a, a long, long time. And it, so it's fascinating to find out where great songwriters, you know, where that comes from and how they form it and all, all of that stuff, I think. So uh, it's interesting. And, and you are a, a great uh, songwriter, in my humble opinion. Um, that's not going to get you much. I don't have any awards to hand out, but uh, <laughs> I, 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 I think you're pretty dang good. Uh, and and well, I, I got to know about the, your live show, though. And, and Billy Currington, y'all are together, and this is going to be, I think, an incredibly fun night. Oh man, and don't yeah, uh, don't forget about Larry Fleet. That guy's great. Oh yes, um, yes, yes. I love you know, Larry. And it's it's uh, for people that have not seen my show. Um, I don't I don't think there's a more tight rocking band. You know, it's uh, we are we are uh, a well oiled machine. We've been doing it. For, we've been the same band for a while, and they're just they're incredible. Um, and it is uh, for people that haven't seen the show. It, it's you know, I just, I'm all the time getting people coming up to me being like, you know, I'd heard a few songs on the radio, but I had no idea what I was getting into yeah. until I saw your show. And then it was like, I had to go get every record. I had to go do a deep dive because Man. the live show is what's made us so successful. Yes. Um, it's what's, we've created a culture that's like, it's a rabid fan base that follows us around. But it's, we put so much time an effort into the live show and I, it's it's it is a high octane show yes yes uh well we can't wait we cannot wait may 17th is when it's going to be happening right here at the mercedes benz amphitheater that's a nice name isn't it uh, kip yeah it is i, I dig it um <laughs> I, i've never uh i've never owned a mercedes benz but uh, but i dig it uh, uh there's a song in there somewhere i've never owned a mercedes benz you know because she had that other song, "Lord, won't you buy me one?" Well, so. I've, I've already, I've already written that. It's called something about a truck, but I, uh, <laughs> you know. Yes, you have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one, by the way, uh, uh, an AC? It, it won an uh, American Country Award, didn't it? Some I don't know. I don't remember. I think it did back in the day. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> You're too busy surfing. You don't care. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, well, listen, we're fans, big fans. And cannot wait for the show on uh, on May seventeenth. I really think you and Billy. Uh, I mean, everybody loves Billy and uh, and you guys together on one stage with Larry Fleet. On top of that, is going to be one one heck of a night. So we're looking forward to it. And uh, and just thank you for spending a few minutes with us today, man. You bet, brother. I'll see you at the show. All right, bud. We'll see you then. Thanks. Later, man. This is the Stephen DC Show. There he is, Kip Moore, something about a truck.
Good conversation uh, with DC and Kip Moore just a few minutes ago, and it made me like Kip Moore even more. He's a nice guy, very he's nice guy, like a nice guy, and and uh, he's going to be headed to T Town, of course, with Billy Currington, the Mercedes Benz Amphitheater, and that is May seventeenth. And you keep listening because we're giving away tickets. Uh, the ladies love those blue eyes of his. I'm yeah, told. I know. I like him anyway. But yeah. I know they do. I didn't know he was such a surfer though. I had, had no idea, and I wish I had been able to be part of that conversation. And I was wasn't available because I'm a surfer and, and uh, <laughs> yeah, you're I always surf, I surf TikTok every night yeah and face bag and all of them channels all kinds all of the surfing. channels uh hey early reports indicate that Beyonce is now the front runner to win <laughs> no this is just top country female artist what? at this year's Billboard Music Awards based on the success of her latest album, Cowboy Carter. Okay, I think we're carrying this a tad too I far. I think we might be a little premature in that. Yeah. Although, I have to play something for you uh, that just blows me away in DC, too. It's, it's AI, which AI can do anything. They took her song, uh, Texas Hold'em, which you hear on 95.3 The Bear and Country Radio. And with AI, they made it appear that it was done by Hank Williams Sr. And it's just too good. It's pretty good. It yeah. sounds just like a 1950s Hank Williams Sr. song. Listen. Well, this ain't Texas. Ain't no hold up. So lay your cards down, 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 down. <laughs> so park your legs. Lexus. I didn't have Throw back your then. keys up and stick around, round, 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 round. And I'll be damned if I can't slow dance with you. Come get it, pour some sugar on me, honey, too. It's a real life boogie and a real life hold. Yeah, don't be a b come and take it to the floor. I'll be damned if I can't slow dance with you. Come pour some sugar on me, honey, too. It's a real life boogie and a real life hold up. Don't be a come and take it to the floor now. Hank Williams. <laughs> Hank Williams Sr. doing Beyonce's Texas Hold'em. Wow. And somebody just turned on the radio and said, what? I guess Hank Sr. can do it if she can be the female country yeah. music artist of the year. Yeah. This is the Stephen D.C. Show. Yeah. Um, okay, so I got a, a, a brain tickler that um, I'm going to throw at you. And you know what? We've got uh, Travis Tritt tickets. Whoever figures it out wins whatever they want. Uh -huh. And we'll give you a shot at Roll Tide Roll like we promised yeah. to this hour. Yeah. So here's the question. It's National Siblings Day. Uh -huh. I don't have any. I feel left out. Well, I'm an only child. Listen to this. Four out of five Americans have at least one brother or sister. That makes me feel worse. So I don't know why your folks decided after you that was it. They're done. Why do you put it like that? After I mean, that me. could have been because they said, well, we've this is perfection. Why, yeah, but why at? Well, okay, thank you. We, I'll take that. We, we, we don't want to even try, and I, we, we've got I'm the gonna, perfect I'm son. Gonna, I'm going to take that. <laughs> DC, trust me, there was only one perfect son, and I ain't him. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that's very true. Um, so... And, and then another thing I was thinking before I tell you this uh, uh, little question is that uh, we sh I, you should say something nice to your sibling. We don't do that enough. Like, we oftentimes will say things nice to, you know, our, there's days for, for mom and dad, days for our loved, our, our uh, you know, uh, relationships. But not siblings. But not, not but, brothers and sisters. But today is sibling day, so, so today'd be the day to do it. Call your, your, your brother or sister. What do we call them? <laughs> but, you know, you may be fighting with them over uh, uh, inheritance. Well, I mean, you know, so, I mean, I know. get just over it. Let uh, it go. Life's too short. Just, you know, text your, uh, your brother or sister and say something nice on National Siblings Day. But here's the question. Um, the most famous sibling pairs in America, the most famous, and I've got the, the list here, which one do you think is uh, the, the most famous pair of siblings, so the, the number most, one? The most famous. It could be brother, brother, sister, sister, brother, yep. sister. Call us and tell us, and you pick which concert you want to go see. Uh, we're standing by 205-339-4953, 205-339-4953 for the concert tickets. You pick what you want to go to. So the most famous sibling pair 
Like in history? Yeah, yeah. Well, and That's I guess this question. is just recently they asked Americans, you okay. know, hey, okay. who, who are, are the most thinking? famous siblings? Okay. Hey, who's this, please? This is Alsa George. Well, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? We're wonderful, too. Thank you for listening. Who is the most famous sibling pair, in your opinion? Who do you think that most people said it was? Well, most people would probably say the Kardashians. The Kardashians, you know, that is that, a good I, answer. I didn't even think of that. But, yeah, most people these days, depending on how old the people that were polled were, yeah. might say that. They were top five. They were the Kardashians. They weren't number one. But they're not number one. But that was a great answer. <laughs> okay, but they're top five. They were top five. Bear, hi, who's this? This is Tim. Hey, who's the most famous sibling pair, uh, according to... I'm going to say Mary Kay Nashville. <laughs> what happened to them? I used to like them, the Elson <laughs> I have no idea. twins. Far out, dude. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. They would always say little cheesy lines like that. Uh -huh. um, is it Mary Kate and Ashley? It better not be. It's not. Okay. No. They they weren't in the top ten that All I right. can see People here. Come in 205 339 4953 the most famous siblings, the duo. According to a bunch of people that were surveyed, who do you think people said it was? It, it shocked me. Not the most famous pair, but uh -huh. it shocked me that one of the, the top ten was Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez. I, 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 mean, I forget that they're even uh, brothers. Yeah, they are. Bear, uh, Bear, hi, who's this? And what's your uh, guess uh, on famous siblings? Most famous? Uh, the Chrisley. The Chrisleys. Oh, okay. They've gotten a lot of publicity. That's another good show. Yeah. I uh, love it. I like but they're doing it from jail now. Well, they're not doing it at all now. The show. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be good from jail, I think. It would be great from jail. I'd like to see how Mr. Chrisley's doing in jail. I think he's doing quite well. <laughs> I am sorry. It's not the Chrisleys. It's not the Chrisleys. Y'all are missing a couple real obvious now, ones. Keep in mind, a bunch here. of people, just like uh, you and, and, and us, were surveyed and asked the most famous siblings... Bar yep. none, period. Yep. Most famous brothers, sisters, whatever. Yes, Who yes. did they say? Bear, hi, who's this? This is out to George again. Are right, you going to give it a second shot? Good. What do you I think know. it is? Let's go, with, let's go with Beyonce and Sullivan. Sullivan, oh. Sullivan, her twin. Oh. Uh, Solange, I think, is how they say Solange. it. I didn't, I didn't okay. know she had a twin sister. She does. Um, oh, okay. I'm sorry. And I, well, I'm not sure that they're twins, but she does okay. have a sister. Uh, but that's not it. Hey, yeah. hi, who's this? Kelly. Kelly, my favorite name. Kelly. <laughs> What's your guess? Is it the Osmond? The Osmonds. Well, now, see, they're incredibly famous. Yeah. And obviously, a bunch of brothers and then the Marie. Was it the Osmonds? A bunch Osmonds? of brothers. Donnie and Marie. Um, one, two, three, four, five. No, they did not make the top ten either. Well, got me party no, foul, party no. foul on that. Um, I mean, I'm looking at some of the names on the list. The jo the Jonas Brothers are on here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, let's see. Serena and Venus Williams well, are on one. here. Hey, Bear. Hi, who's this? Oh, oh, I, lost oh that she one. bowed they out. Were, I think they were going to say the Jonas Brothers. And, uh, and Travis and Jason Kelsey are on here. Okay. And, you know, uh, Travis... Because of Taylor Swift sure. has become, a known caller. yeah. Oh, is that what that is? Okay, uh, and also um, Ben Affleck and his brother yeah. Casey Affleck. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed any of those. Bear, hi. Who's this? Michaela. Hey, what's your answer? The Jonas. No, it's still not the Jonas Brothers. It's not. I just mentioned that it. Well, I tell you what, we're gonna let this one stand. And we're going to keep it going. We've got to get into our all-request hour. We're going to keep taking your calls for concert tickets. You decide what you want to see. Uh, if you just turned on the radio and you're like, what are they doing? One more time, here it yeah. is. So it's National Siblings Day, and they asked Americans, hey, you know, who are your favorite siblings or the most famous, you know, that you think of on Siblings Day? And this pair came in number one. And I can't believe we haven't uh, gotten it yet right. because we talk about them all the time. Who are they? There's a hint. 205-339-4953. Oh, we've got a winner. We've got a winner. We've got a winner. Uh-oh. Hello. Who is this? This is Tim. 
Tim. All right, Tim, so we're talking since it's National Siblings Day, they surveyed Americans and asked them who are the most famous siblings out there. Who do you say? Peyton and Eli Manning. Yeah, That's correct. Can you believe it? The Manning boys. Yes, sir. Yep, they, they came in first. Second to that was Serena and Venus Williams. Third was uh, Travis and Jason Kelsey. Fourth, Casey and Ben Affleck. And fifth, the Kardashians. So the Peyton and Eli Manning brothers, who we were looking for. Tim, you get to pick the concert you want to see. Would you like to see... Okay. Would you like to see Rick Springfield with 38 Special, Travis Tritt, Cody Jinx, Billy Currington with Kip Moore, or Cool in the Gang at Funkaloosa? Let's do 38 Special, Rick Springfield. All right. That's going to be a good one. You got it. Hang on, man. We'll get you all hooked up. Uh, so it is National Siblings Day. Call your brother or sister. Yeah. And say something nice. This is the Stephen D.C. Show. D.C., a former Waffle House waitress in Walker County, claims that a man came in and told her that he was leaving her a tip to look out the window of the Waffle House. He said, I'm leaving you that Jeep right out there as a tip. What? Well, the Waffle House waitress was very, very excited, as, as as anyone would be. Yeah. Until she found out it was a stolen Jeep, and he was just dropping <laughs> oh it off. gosh. And having a quick bite at the Waffle House, and he said he was leaving it for the waitress. Now, so that's just flat-out cruel. And you a know. news television station, a news station, was airing viewer videos of the eclipse the other day, and something naughty slipped past their screener. It was a man staging an eclipse with his naked family jewels. And somehow that ended up. <laughs> uh, how's that work exactly? Uh, yeah, well, Don't yeah. tell me. Uh, uh, I'd like to see that on Channel 6 just one time. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Dennis Rogers would swallow her snuff. He was staging an eclipse. I like the way. With his naked family jewels. <laughs> How does that just slip into the video? Staging. <laughs> <laughs> How the, do only you thing, the only thing that would make that funnier is if it were the TV news station's weatherman doing it. I, I'm going to get in front of the lamp here, y'all. Here we go. And by the way, stage one. <laughs> I, I, I'll pay you, DC, $1,000 out of my pocket if you can guess what the Google number one Google search thing was yesterday. The yesterday. number one thing Google searched yesterday. Okay, well, I would have thought Eclipse, but that was Monday. Uh, yesterday, wow, the most searched thing on Google was definitely, I have no idea. I'm glad you didn't stick with what you first said because I would have had to reach deep into my pocket in search of a thousand dollars. It was still the eclipse? It was, <laughs> this is really funny. Yesterday, the number one search thing on Google, and they think it was caused by the eclipse, was eyes hurt. <laughs> oh, we're oh, searching for yeah. some solution because apparently they looked at it without their glasses on. I'm glad you brought that up. Eyes because hurt. I'm glad I don't have to pay you. Um, I got a story right here that I've been walking around with all day. Um, and it involves a woman who says, let me get this uh, right here. Woman claims she went partially blind after looking at solar eclipse for just 10 seconds. With no glasses on. I, I, I'm assuming yeah, uh, yeah. a young woman is detailing her struggle today uh -huh. with impaired vision oh boy. and difficulty reading uh -huh. uh, after staring directly into the solar eclipse. Bridget Carey Minkin King mm -hmm. uh, said uh -huh. she covered one eye. Well, you can't do that. <laughs> and looked at the eclipse for about 10 to 15 seconds. I mean, we were warned repeatedly not to do that. She did not have protective glasses on when she woke up and looked at her phone. She noticed a gaping blind spot uh, see? in her left eye. See what can happen? Um, or this, don't see what can happen. She went to see her opt. Well, she did this fast. She went to see an optometrist yesterday who confirmed that she had irrevocably damaged her eyeballs. There you go. She will now have migraines. <laughs> blurry and distorted vision and white dots. And I bet next time she'll listen to the experts when they say, don't look at it. Yeah. Don't look at it. Although they say staring at the sun on any day is risky. Well, yeah, that's right. Uh, it uh, can cause, you know, burned retinas, all that stuff. 
Don't look at the other thing. That's why we're... I mean, why would we pass out glasses? And yesterday, the most searched thing on Google was eyes hurt. Eyes hurt. Imagine that. <laughs> eyes hurt. Yeah. Well, I guess that's going. They're, they're making us leave. We're out of minutes, but we'll do it again tomorrow morning with more concert tickets and a beach trip to give away. You got that right. Uh, okay, we dedicate the show to our law enforcement officers, our men and women of law enforcement, and our other first responders. Uh, for example, our EMT rescue folks, our firefighters, and our medical community, our nurses and doctors. We honor our U.S. military each and every day on the Stephen D.C. Show. Thank you for all you do for us, and God bless you truck drivers that listen. We sure do love all of you. Uh, Jesus is Lord. See y'all. Hold time. Stephen D.C. Say goodbye. The Stephen D.C. Show has left the building.